In this video, we'll give a rough derivation of the relativistic correction to the kinetic energy of the hydrogen atom. And we begin by reviewing the fact that for a fully relativistic particle, its momentum and energy are defined a little differently. Its momentum is the typical classical momentum, but it's got this extra uh, factor in the denominator, which takes into account uh, effects from special relativity, so length contraction and time dilation. We also need to redefine our total energy, uh, which is now given by this equation, mc squared over the same uh, factor over here. And in this case, the kinetic energy is taken as the excess energy that a particle has over its rest energy. It, the rest energy of a particle is defined as E equals mc squared, making the kinetic energy uh, equal to this E that we have over here, minus the rest energy of the particle. And here m is what's typically called the rest mass of the particle. So we can combine uh, equations one and two here. So the, uh, in a particular way, so we'll have E squared minus P squared C squared, where each one of these terms is given by these expressions. The energy now takes on, the square energy takes on this form. The square of the momentum takes on this form with the extra C squared. We can factor out the M squared C to the fourth and this denominator. So that in the numerator, we're only left with min minus b squared over c squared from this term over here. We have a c squared in the denominator because we factor out a c to the fourth and there was only a c squared over here. And this simplifies, so these two cancel out and we're left with m squared c to the fourth. And that means that we can re-express our energy as the square root of p squared c squared plus m squared c to the fourth. Here it's important to remember that this p is the relativistic momentum it's this one over here, it's not just mv. So what this means then is for a, for a fully relativistic particle, its kinetic energy would be this total energy minus its rest energy. And this is the expression that we'd have to use if a particle was completely relativistic. However, in the last video, we saw that in the hydrogen atom, that system is uh, pretty much non-relativistic since its momentum scaled as MC times the fine structure constant. or put another way, P over MC and it scales as one over 137. And what that will allow us to do then is we can re-express our kinetic energy as MC squared Uh, plus this square root factor minus one 
And if P over MC is one over 137, if you square this, it's even smaller. So we don't need to use the full relativistic formula. We can approximate this by a Taylor series expansion and only keep the first couple of terms. Okay, so we can tailor expand only taking into account relativistic effects a little bit. So the kinetic energy will be one plus one half P M C squared minus one eight P M C to the fourth plus several other terms in the Taylor series expansion minus this one over here. Uh, this will be, once we simplify it, it'll be P squared over 2M minus P to the fourth, 8M cubed C squared plus some other terms. So you see here that you recover the classical momentum that we had already included in our Hamiltonian. And the lowest order correction to the kinetic energy is then given by this term over here. Okay, so our lowest order correction to the energy, just rewriting it, is going to be given by that. And this we'll call delta H rel relativistic. And if we want to deal in terms of operators, then we just associate every dynamical variable to a, an operator. Uh, so to get a, a sense of the scale of the contributions of this term. So we wanna know if this is much smaller than the energy scales of the hydrogen atom. And this is to, uh, to check if we can indeed use perturbation theory to treat this extra term. Otherwise, the Schrodinger equation wouldn't be solvable in closed form. Okay, so because this is a correction to the kinetic energy, we're going to compare with the kinetic energy of the original Hamiltonian. And so we have our lowest order correction to the kinetic energy. And we'll take the ratio between that and the original term for the kinetic energy. Simplifying this down, you get 4m squared c squared over p squared or rather, sorry, this should be the other way around, p squared over four mc squared. And this scales as v electron over c, which means it scales like the fine structure constant squared. The fine structure constant squared is about one over 137 squared, which is about one over 19,000. So you see that the original kinetic energy contribution is much, much larger, about 19,000 times larger than our lowest order correction. So this shows that uh, we should in fact be able to use perturbation theory uh, to treat this extra term. And in the next video, we'll see how we can do that for the case of the hydrogen atom, which is a highly degenerate uh, spectrum. And we'll see how we can 
use the loophole of the general perturbation theory to simplify the problem.